Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today's there was a wonderful session that is design and development of RC aircraft. A lecture by Juja Singh. Have, a lecture by Juja Singh, and uh, he is a member, aero modeling member from uh, Kokar Hobby Tech. The lecture was organized by Niti Ayog ATL Lab of KV Air Force, Chandigarh, in association with Temsara. So thank you for accepting our invitation, Juja Singh. And uh, the first of all. I would like to welcome the principal and vice principal who was uh, joining in the live in YouTube. Uh, they are thankful to them for accepting this uh, event for the students community and the participants, those who have registered, nearly 550 participants have registered for this wonderful event. So I would like to welcome them also. So let's uh, not waste much of time. I will give the session to Jujar. Jujar, you can take two. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Ponma Kishan, sir, uh, who invited me on the, such a wonderful platform to deliver a lecture on the design and fabrication of, of RC airplane on the behalf of Koka Robin. So, we will start uh, from the basic introduction of the aero modeling and the slowly, slowly, we will learn about the uh, different concepts and the types of aircraft which we make in this aero modeling. So first of all, what is aero modeling? So aero modeling is basically activity involved in the designing and the development of the flying of small air vehicles. Uh, basically it includes the radio control aircrafts, control line aircrafts, gliders and paper planes, etc. It given a good opportunity uh, in which we, uh, we can apply our engineering skills in which we are uh, which are the same as the real aircraft it, uh, and it provides the uh, enormous opportunity in the development of the new kind of aircrafts. So basically in aero molding we are having five type of aircrafts which we manufacture. Uh, number one is trainer plane, number two is 3D plane, number three is gliders. Number four is jet plane and number five are mil military scale models. Basically, these are only the scale models. Uh, all the aircrafts with, with uh, these categories are only scale models. So trainer plane is the class of the aircraft designed specifically to train the pilots or the engineers if we talk about the uh, real world. Whereas in aero molding, trainer planes are similarly used to train the RC pilots to know the concepts behind of flying of the RC planes specifically. So in this plane, we are having specification as high wing, straight wing, flat water, airfoil, low speed and the easy controllability. Uh, all the concepts mentioned here, I will explain in the further slides. So these are, these three are the very basic trainer planes, which we, in which we can see that in the first picture, the aircraft Name Hindustan 40 is the high wing trainer aircraft, which is basically the copy of Cessna, uh, Cessna aircraft, basically. And the, in second picture, you can see the glider type of uh, trainer aircraft, which is uh, a high speed trainer aircraft, basically. And the third picture, you can see the engine powered trainer aircraft, which is the, uh, you might have seen the J3 Piper Cub aircraft, which is most widely used for the training of pilots. So in the RC aero molding itself, we are also using the same copy of the J3 Piper Cup to train the RC pilots. So now there comes the 3D plane. The word 3D here means the aerobatic flying. Aerobatic is the basically, uh, uh, we can say stunt flying or we can say the maneuver, maneuver uh, different kind of maneuvers. So in aerobatic aircraft, we are performing different type of freestyle flying, like different stunts we are performed by the RC pilots. And in actual also, the different pilots are trained in a such a way that they can maneuver the aircraft in different forms. So in 3D plane, you can see the uh, basic type of 3D planes which are shown in this picture. 
uh, the uh, the first one is the copy of uh, extra 330 aircraft which is the real uh, 3d plane uh, we have uh, got the scaled copy of this model and uh, in second picture you can see that uh, we have manufactured the same model copy at our workshop now comes the glider plane glider are the basically fixed wing aircraft though all aircrafts are fixed wing but in this gliders we are having very uh, very thin aerofoil and the very uh, le the cord length is very less as compared to the trainer planes so these gliders have very small engines or the electric motors and they do not require any power while soaring in the high air altitudes they only fly with the help of the uh, winds which are blowing at very high speed on the higher altitudes so these are the two type of glider planes which are most widely used in the aero modeling the number one is the which we have uh, previously seen this is the trainer glider plane uh, which is used to train the glider pilots or in rc and the second one is surveillance gliders uh, in this kind of gliders we are fitting uh, different kind of cameras sensors to in order to aerially map the different uh, uh, different areas where manually we can not map the area properly so now there comes the jet plane these are the copy of original fighter jets or airliners which which we uh, normally observe on the airports like 747 737 a320 and many more so there are different categories based on their performance design which are further classified under this category so in this picture you can see that the, there are uh, two types of jet planes number one is the uh, scaled copy of boeing aircraft which we designed at our workshop and the uh, number two is uh, which we normally see the atr aircraft which uh, normally flies on uh, domestic flights this is also the scaled copy of the atr aircraft which we have designed here and the uh, uh, though it's having the propeller but uh, the engine which is used is the turbo prop which is the under, which comes under the further classification of the jet engines now there comes the military plane though we all know that military planes design and the configuration is highly classified but still some of we can get some data from which we can design the aircrafts so these aircrafts include the fighters transporters uavs and many more the purpose of these aircrafts is basically to train the uh, pilots of the defense so that they can fly the actual uavs properly as we all know that indian air force has inducted the uh, very highly class uh, specialized uavs like uav searcher uav drone so in order to train those pilots these kind of small rc uavs are used so that they can get proper training on the on those aircrafts so th there are these are the uh, kind of uav military plane which we are manufacturing here the number one is uav uh, 1e this is the first model which we manufactured this is the uh, this model we, you can say that it's the scaled copy of the uav searcher and the second model which we you can see in the camouflage design is the also the uh, next version of this model in which we have increased its payload capacity and all and uh, underneath you can see that the uh, model flying this is the uh, c130 hercules which is the uh, which is considered as the best transporter aircraft in the uh, field of the army aviation and all which this is used to transport the military tanks military vehicles and the medical supplies in the area where manual the we cannot supply these things so in this you can see that the, this is the uh, military plane uh, uh, though it's fighter jet so it's the sukhoi 30 mki fighter jet which we have designed through the only pictures we got only we got three designs top view bottom and the side view from that only we have designed this aircraft as as i have already mentioned that the some data of the aircrafts are not available due to its uh, we can see the say that the data is classified so we have manufactured this by uh, by making our own uh, ratio from the picture 
of the measurement. So now comes the, all of you might be thinking that the what kind of material we are using to build such a heavy and big aircraft. So normally we are using the balsa wood and the high density foam in the aircrafts to manufacture. As balsa wood and high density foam are having its lightweight and high strength properties, which we will discuss further. So balsa wood is basically Okroma uh, flowering plant wood, which is commonly uh, known as balsa tree. It's fastest growing tree that can grow up to 30 meter tall. So balsa wood is very lightweight and it's, it provides us very high strength. So we, not, we, are not, we don't have to provide any additional strength on this balsa wood as it provides us sufficient strength to make the models. So this model, you can observe that it is made truly from the balsa wood. You can see its wing and the fuselage structure is totally made from the balsa wood only. And one thing I want to mention in this, that in the while constructing the balsa wood models, we have to consider each and every design parameter according to the original aircraft. Like we are having spars, ribs, the fuselage, formers, fuselage strangers and all we have to consider like we are manufacturing in an original aircraft so that we can get proper finishing and the design and strength as well. So second comes the high density foam which we normally say the, the high density thermocol also. This is very most widely material available all over the world in the different types. So we can see that the high density foam is the number one, it's very lightweight. Number two, it provide, it also provides very high strength. And number three, we can cut and design it any shape which we require. So most small, mostly the small aircraft which we ma manufacture are from the high density foam, especially the trainer aircraft categories. So you can see here that these three models are manufactured from the high density foam only. So the first picture is of the uh, Sukhoi 30 model. This was uh, clicked while its uh, first test flight was done. So this total, mo this model is totally made of high density foam and the uh, tail plane is only made of the uh, balsa wood. So in order to get the proper CG and the weight uh, to maintain the proper weight. And then second picture, you can see that the fuselage is uh, manufactured from the high density foam. This is totally single piece foam sheet, uh, sheet block through which we have uh, designed and uh, cutted the uh, fuselage design. And then the third picture, you can see the uh, basic model, which uh, basic model of C-130, which was designed from the, uh, which was manufactured from the high density foam. So now comes the one of the most important factor, which is uh, design parameters. So for, we have to consider the following parameters for all type of aircrafts which we have discussed, discussed previously. So number one is type of wing and location. Number two is fuselage type. Number three is landing gear type. Number four is power plant. And number and last is selection of electronic components which we are installing in the aircrafts. So, so this is the basic, uh, we can say the basic formulation to design an RC airplane in which we can see, say that. So, so for that, we have to consider initially a wing span. Suppose we are get, uh, uh, we have to consider an initial wing span. And from that only we have to, we will get all the calculations from the letters. Uh, uh, for, for example, if our uh, fuselage length is totally 75% of the wing span. So our main factor, first of all, main factor is to design and while designing, we have to consider a specific uh, dimension as per our requirement of the wingspan. And then only we can design the fuselage length. So after that, we have to, uh, to find a balance point. The, as we all know that the center of gravity should be uh, proper in order to get the, uh, it get, uh, get a proper stable flying. So if, uh, for example, we can say that if our center of gravity is ahead the neutral point, then our aircraft will tend to nose down. As a result of which we have to provide its 
more elevator up elevator is the basically the component of the aircraft which provides is the up and down movement so if our nose is going down then we have to provide its more up movement as a result of which we have to provide its more power and the pilot efficiency will also be tested in that and if our cg is behind the balance point then our, then our no uh, then our tail will be heavy and the aircraft will tend to be nose up nose up means the aircraft will start climbing and and, and at uh, one particular point the aircraft will tend to stall so in order to uh, consider all the factors in this cg balance there should be one point in which aircraft flies neutrally neither uh, nose up or nose down so in order to find that point we are considering 25 to 33% of the cord of the wing cord is the distance from the leading edge to trailing edge of the wing leading edge is the uh, portion from which wing start and the trailing edge is the point at which we, uh, our wing ends so as we have got now the wing span and wing cord and the fuselage length now we will come with the tail plane and in tail plane our uh, our fin area fin here we can say fin is a vertical stabilizer which provides us the directional stability the fin area is the 33% of stabilator area stabilator is the our uh, uh, elevator plus the uh, horizontal the stabilizer these two components are combined and together we said as the stabilizer area which provides us the stability while flying aircraft so and the rudder should be rudder is the working portion of the uh, horizontal st vertical stabilizer which should be 1 by 3 to 1 by 2 of the fin here the fin as we as i have already mentioned the fin is the vertical stabilizer the fin and rudder are the two different components the rudder is the working portion of the vertical stabilizer which provides us the directional movement while taxiing on the runway and while uh, having the directional coordinates while to change the coordinates uh, smoothly we can say and most important part is the 2 to 3 degree down thrust which is mentioned in the figure this is uh, this is meant uh, this we can say that it is very important factor while fitting of the uh, either engine jet engine electric motor or any other component which provides us the thrust on the rc planes 2 to 3 degree down thrust means that the from the axis of the center line of the aircraft our motor should be 2 to 3 degree down so that we can get proper proper thrust on its axis as if we fit on the Zero zero degree, then we won't be able to lift off aircraft very easily, as it will take very long run up. So, in order to that, uh, in order to counterpart that thing, we are installing the our electronics two to three down thrust, and one to three one degree to three degree uh, left or right as per the direction of the motor. As we all know that every rotating thing provides us the counter thrust. So, in order to overcome that thrust, we are Uh, installing it little offset from the axis line of the fuselage so now from here we can easily see that the how we can have uh, how we have to design the wings fuselage stabilizer and elevator i will explain uh, everything step by step so from starting from the uh, uh, our nose portion here it's mentioned that the 2 to 3 degree thrust right so it means that our motor is rotating in the left direction as if as it's rotating in the left direction so all the torque will be which will be produced will be in the right so there will be one twisting movement so in order to overcome that we are uh, installing a 2 to 3 degree offset from the central line of the fuselage so in order to reduce the twisting movement which happens while providing its full power so now i will come to the location of the wings the, from the nose cone the wings should be 1 to 5 1.5 times the cord of the wing so basically the cord of the wing the total cord which we have taken so by multiplying the 1.5 we will get the location of the nose cone from the leading edge of the wing 
similarly to calculate the distance from trailing edge to fuselage the remaining fuselage which is uh, tail plane we have to multiply the chord with the two to three times in order to get our desired length of the fuselage so there are two type of ailerons which we are using in the rc one is strip ailerons and one is normal ailerons strip ailerons are basically used in the nitro engine powered aircrafts in which we are we we are, we are having very less requirement of the certain movements we need very slow and slow and the uniform movement in the aileron so that we can easily maneuver the aircraft as nitro engines are very highly powerful engines so we have to design an ailerons in a way that we can maneuver it easily and the normal ailerons are used in the trainer plane so that pilot can get familiar with the control surfaces surfaces during the uh, its course flying so strip ailerons are the one by eight time of the chord length similarly ailerons which we are using is the uh, one by four time of the chord length and the span of the ailerons is one by four of the wing spans strip ailerons are are up to the span till the fuselage starts so from the beginning of the fuselage of left side to the right uh, to the left uh, uh, left i am talking about the left strip ailerons so from the left uh, total length of the wing will be considered as the uh, strip ailerons which is uh, working which is in the working portions so now now i will come with the uh, tail plane in the tail plane we have already uh, studied in the uh, previous slide that how to design tail plane so now here we will be seeing the how to how to get the proper dimensions of the tail plane so in tail plane we are having the stabilator i have already mentioned that the stabilator and elevator are the different things so we will design accordingly as per the as per the uh, previous slide so stabilator and elevator uh, are, are will be designed according to the percentage which i have which i have mentioned in the previous slide so here you can see that uh, now i will be explaining the step by step procedure in the designing of the rc planes with the help of picture representation so the first one is the this is the our this we this was our project to design and uh, delta wing aircraft basically our ref, reference of design was b2 spirit north american bomber which is stealth bomber so first of all we have to in picture one you can see that we have to design one basic basic overview of the aircraft so that we can get to know that our design is going in the symmetric way or not so after that we have to it we have to sand it as per the our requirement of our aerofoil section uh, as per requirement of our engine fitting and all and then number 2 you can see that we have installed one uh, replica of engine jet engine which is known as electronic ducted fan basically this is the uh, brushless motor powered fan unit which provides us a very good amount of thrust as compared to propeller propeller driven motors so uh, in step number 2 we have seen that in the photograph number 2 that the sanding has been done and the engine is installed and in number 3 in the final finishing of the aircraft we have covered it with the black tape so in order to make it similar with the p2 uh, bomber view which we you have might have seen in the photographs in the youtube so in third in in third step in which we say is the installment of the electronic components and the control functions control setups and all which is done in the third step and after that we are going for after that we go for its test flight to check whether its cg is proper or not so in this so next is the uh, basic designing of the uav so in step number 1 you can see that uh, the basic overview we cut the basic design from the blocks of the high density foam as i have already mentioned as high density foam is very uh, easily available in our area and so we are most widely using this in manufacturing almost all the kind of aircrafts
so in uh, though us is a different kind of and the configuration so in this there is only the fuselage length is only up to the trailing edge portion of the wing and the remaining portion of the fuselage is on the boom structure which you can see in the picture 3 that two aluminum spar kind of pipes are going to the trailing edge at which we are fitting the tail plane so there are also different kind of tail planes which i will be explaining in the next slide so uh, which are used in the different kind of aircrafts so similarly you can see that the uh, uh, production of the uav models which we are doing so the cheetah 1e was our initial model in which we have tested almost everything about the payload capacity and the uh, surveillance aerial surveillance as well so our next model uh, was the uh, cheetah 2e which was designed in a specific way so that it can carry the heavy payload so which uh, the trial of this aircraft is going on so we are testing it for the agricultural purposes so next is our the uh, which we can say that the one of our biggest achievement to uh, build a, such a big and uh, uh, lightweight aircraft so you can see that in the second picture the its wing span is around the 10 to 12 feet approximately so uh, if we are making this aircraft with the help of balsa wood then it would surely it would be around uh, 20 to 30 kg of weight as we have to give it high strength also so now we have changed its material with the uh, high density foam and now by uh, installing all the components in the battery system we are getting its weight around 10 kg which is very big achievement to get a weight around 10 kg in such a big wing span aircraft so this is the uh, recent construction with, uh, of the sukhoi 30 fighter jet model in which we have firstly we have um, in picture one you can see that the basic design was rough rough design we can say the rough design was made from the uh, three three views of the aircraft one is top view and bottom view and the isometric view from uh, which we got from the internet and by scaling from that only we have manufactured this aircraft as no official data is available of the dimensions and the power plant used in sukhoi 30 especially and in second you can see that we have installed a green coating color on its uh, on its body so this is the one of the kind of special paint which provides its high strength to the foam and and painting and and to paint on this uh, after applying this coat is becomes very easily we can very get very smooth finish of the paints on this so last photo of this model is uh, this is the our uh, final uh, uh, model after the after doing the test flight so this is now okay for uh, uh, for uh, for its flights and and it and uh, and also it can carry a payload very less payload though it's having very less payload capacity as as its wing span is very less so it can carry up to 500 to 1 kg of payload on so now we will go with the basic parts of the airplane which we are manufacturing so basic parts means the what are the uh, configurations of the different kind of aircrafts which we are manufacturing like trainer aircrafts have different configuration fighter jets have different config configuration uh, uavs have different configuration so one by one we will study all the things so first of all fuselage fuselage is the uh, main component which we can say everything everything which includes the wings motor engine battery servos and other components are installed are attached to with the fuselage only so it's most important part of the aircraft uh, if we talk about the balsa configuration then we are using formers which it provides at the high strength so that it could take up the high load acting while landing the aircraft and while taking off the aircraft. this is the fuselage design which we are seeing in the picture is the basic uh, very basic design of the train trainer aircraft 
which was uh, uh, which is uh, totally made of the high density foam only and you can see that the engine is installed on this this is basically the gasoline engine which is a petrol engine uh, two stroke 26 cc engine which is installed in, on this head so now the wing, now the second important component is wing wing is the uh, that component of the aircraft which provides us the lift lift is the force which uh, upward force which act on the wing which provides us which help to fly our aircraft in here wings are uh, designed according to our requirement according to requirement of our aircraft and uh, as per the different aerofoils aerofoil is the cross section of the wing which we uh, which is uh, taken up from the uh, different websites we can get about the data of the different aerofoils which are used in the different categories of aircrafts so wing we should have high strength as should as it can bear heavy load while doing the aerobatics or take off while uh, with heavy payload heavy payload means if we are having if we have installed the payload around 2 to 3 kg then we have to consider that our wing should be strong enough so that it can bear the impact load which is acting on the wings while landing with the uh, full payload capacity of the aircraft so this is the basic design of the wing in the left picture you can see that the basic design which we have uh, constructed and the spar with spar fitting is uh, going on uh, uh, spar fitting is you can observe in the uh, picture and the second picture describes us the detail detail of the components of the wing as wing also have the different components which make it strong and and uh, highly maneuverable so starting from the left we can see that the wing root wing root is the that point or the position of the wing which is installed with the fuselage of the aircraft so next come the leading edge leading edge is the front portion basically we can say the front portion which is uh, which which is towards the engine engine uh, direction in the trailing edge is the uh, pre, uh, rear portion of the wing which we can see the backward portion of the wing the skin is here mentioned is skin basically is used in the balsa construction only the skin is the, this is very lightweight and the high strength fiber cloth or we can say that is the uh, uh, fiber glass cloth also so this is very thin cloth as we have to consider the weight factor also so all the components will be installed will be of very lightweight and high strength this is the most important consideration while designing the aircraft so next come the spars spars spar is installed throughout the wing left wing and right wing as well it provides the strength main strength is provided by the spar only as for example if we are uh, doing aerobatics Uh, for example we are making the aircraft to uh, maneuver in the circle which we call loop front loop or back loop so in that uh, while doing that stunt the all load will be acting on the spar only which provides which will help to uh, which will help to avoid the breakage of the wing from its center and we have observed this case uh, without installing the spar we uh, wings get broken easily in mid air ribs are the small small portions of the aerofoil cross section which i mentioned earlier uh, these are installed at the specific length a uh, specific distance from each other while designing the aircraft so wing tip is the uh, extreme portion at the at which wing get ends the so wing tip are the designed in the different ways wing tips helps us to avoid the external disturbing forces which we are uh, which are acting on the aircraft so in aviation terminology this is known as drag drag is the kind of frictional force which uh, which opposes the uh, uh, lift which which help us to basically we can say that it uh, it affects the amount of lift produced by the aircraft wing so next come the tail wing uh, tail plane a tail plane is also known as horizontal stabilizer 
uh, it's a small lifting it uh, it is a small lifting surface located on the empennage empennage is basically known as the tail plane behind the main lifting surfaces main lifting surfaces are fixed uh, are our wings installed main wings which are installed on the fuselage so uh, so there are different kind of uh, tail planes which we are having so for example like v tail in v tail configuration they are installed in the v v type in the in the like we uh, v alphabet type so like uh, there is another configuration which is known as h h type t uh, normal conventional type uh main mainly used configurations i will be explaining in the next slides so these are the three most commonly used uh, tail plane configurations in the number first picture you can see that this is basic very basic conventional design of the tail plane which is used most widely in the trainer planes and the transporter category aircrafts as well so in this you can see that the vertical stabilizer is fitted 90 degree at 90 degree to the horizontal stabilizer uh, and in the second picture you can see that this type of configuration we call the t plane configuration as it it exhibits like the uh, our english alphabet t so in that our uh, horizontal stabilizer is fitted above the vertical stabilizer at a particular negative degree 1 or negative degree 2 so this is this is also most widely uh, used in the small transporter aircrafts or big transporter aircrafts like russian aircrafts il 72 il 76 they use this kind of configurations as well in the uh, passenger category also this is uh, this kind of configuration is observed in the atr aircrafts as well and in the third picture you can see that there is a this configuration is known as h type configuration in which we are having two vertical stabilizers installed on the uh, big horizontal stabilizers this kind of configuration is used in the uavs it is used so because we need to have a very uh, we need to have very good strength and maneuverability should be higher in the uavs as we, as we all know that the uavs are basically used for surveillance purposes mainly if we talk about the defense forces so in order to complete uh, so the aircraft should be designed in the way that it should complete its mission in a desired time and should quickly come back to its base so for that we are using h kind of configuration in the uavs so next comes the landing gear landing gear is the undercarriage of the aircraft or the spacecraft which may be used for the takeoff or landing for aircraft it is most uh, different kind of configurations are used so there is uh, there are two names for this configuration undercarriage uh, according to british they they call it as undercarriage according to us aviation they call it landing gear so in this you can see that uh, there are three different uh, type of landing gear which we which have been displayed the number one is the uh, boggy type landing gear we, we have all we all have observed in the trains that the one uh, the behind the uh, the wheels of the boggy are fitted uh, one behind one on the axles so similarly in the transporter category also the all the wheels of the uh, you can see that the, they are fitting one behind one with the help of axles which we have manufactured with the help of carbon fiber sticks and the number 2 picture you can see that uh, it uh, it is having traditional uh, configuration which is most widely and commonly seen and uh, used in the different kind of aircrafts of different categories in this we are having a tricycle type of configuration in which we are having one nose wheel and the two tail wheels which are fitted fitted at the 
एंड पॉइंट ऑफ फ्यूसलाज इस आई एम टॉकिंग दिस केस ऑफ द यू ए बी ओनली एज डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ एयरक्राफ्ट हैव डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ लोकेशन ऑफ द लैंडिंग यू एज पर देयर रिक्वायरमेंट सो इन द नंबर थ्री पिक्चर यू कैन सी दैट द देर इज टेल व्हील इंस्टॉल्ड दीज काइंड ऑफ एयरक्राफ्ट आर नोन एज टेल ड्रैगर्स ड्रैगर्स मीन्स विच ड्रैग्स दी टेल बिहाइंड विच आर हैविंग वन व्हील ऑन दी टेल प्लेन एंड द टू व्हील्स विच आर आर फिटेड ऑन दी underneath the leading edge of the wing so this was the uh, initial design of the uh, initial design in the civil aviation that uh, tail plane after that it uh, after the different modification then we get tricycle configuration and in the bigger way, very big passenger aircrafts we are getting the body type of configurations and different other configurations also so now comes the power plant power plant in rc we are having the two different type of power plants one is engine powered and other is electric setup in electric setup we are having different type of brushless motors which are powered brushless motors are the uh, very very high efficiency motors which are having which are on the three phase setup uh, like the traditional motors which we are getting these are powered by the lithium polymer batteries these are the specialized batteries for the rc planes which provides us the very good power and the good durability as compared to other kind of batteries so these kind of motors have permanent magnet configuration and are having star delta winding like traditional motors which we are getting in the industries similar uh, on the base of that similar design we are getting small motors With the high power and the very good power, RPM power ratings. In engine powered, we are basically having the two type of uh, engines which we are using. One is gas powered, and another one is nitro powered engines. These are available in the both two stroke and the four stroke configurations. Now I will come on the one by one on the these two types of engine. Nitro engines are those engines which are using methanol and the castor oil as its fuel. Uh, for its uh, as these aircraft uh, air, air, these are known as aero engines these are designed in the way that uh, they their fuel used is methanol and the castrol in the specified uh, ratio which is 80 is to 20 that is 80% we will use methanol and the 20% we will use we will be using castrol and as its fuel and gas engines normally which we which we all know that these are the petrol engines these are the small size petrol engines which provides us the good strength and we are using nitro methane in the both configurations to get good power while flying so while designing also the power plant plays very important role so in this two pictures you can see that the two both the configurations are displayed the left one is the nitro engine and the right one is the four stroke petrol in the uh, petrol or the gasoline engine you can say so the these are the uh, two different kinds of the brushless motors which are known as the outrunners and inrunners the left one is the outrunner motor in which the cup or the state we can say the rotor it is rotating and the right one is in runner motor which is used in the edf as we have, as i have mentioned in the edf used in the passenger jet replicas so these are in runner motors in which the outer portion that is rotor is stationary uh, fixed and the uh, winding portion is rotating inside the, the stators now comes the uh, uh, last uh, uh, factor which we are, which we are considering while designing the aircraft so these are radio controls uh, receiver electronic speed controller gyro and battery and charger so in radio control basically we can say that the this is the uh, basic link with the aircraft while uh, standing on the ground 
so in order to get the all the movements done like th throttle elevator position rudder position aileron control and all these all functions are performed by the radios the radios are known as also known as transmitters which transmits the signal input signal from the pilot who is in command of the flying of aircraft to the aircraft this to this is performed by the specific interlink which is which we call as receiver these two things are binded on a particular frequency which is known as 2.4 gigahertz so all the transmitters which we can see uh, which we get in the local market are on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency only so they are having different kind of configurations as per the uh, different companies and as per the requirement of the pilot we can get different kind of transmitters as well in the picture you can see that the two transmitters uh, of the fataba company which is very uh, old company in the aviation specifically in the rc so we can see that the two transmitters are displayed the left one is their old model which is 7c and the right one is their latest model which is 18 18mz so these these are the highly touch screen models we can say that the computerized model with the different kind of functions as well so the, uh, the as i am i was saying that the, there should there is one linkage which through the receiver this, so the this is this component is known as receiver which provides which gets the signal from the transmitter and provides the signal to the servo motors electronic components of the aircraft electronic speed controller is the basically device which is used to uh, which provides the electronic uh, current and the electronic signal to the motor so that uh, we can get proper uh, rpm and the rotation also as we can reverse the rotation by the changing the polarity of the any of the one wire which is connected with the motor so gyros as as we all know that the gyros are most commonly used nowadays in the aero modeling and the bigger aircrafts also so this act as the small autopilot system which provides the stability while flying the aircraft in the air so this kind of gyros are most widely used in the aerobatic flying so as a initial beginners it's very difficult to fly the highly uh, high maneuver maneuverable aircraft so we install the gyros in on those aircrafts in order to get the stable flying so these are the two type of batteries as i have mentioned that lithium lithium, lithium polymer and the uh, nickel cadmium batteries are used most commonly in the aero modeling so we can uh, get uh, batteries as per the requirement of our aircraft and the power configuration of our aircraft so uh, in electric the most important thing is the charging of the batteries as there are spe specialized chargers which we are which we can easily get from the uh, international websites as well so these uh, not only charge the batteries but makes the uh, cells of the battery uh, properly maintained and this they charge in it, it in the balanced way so that we can not uh, battery should not get blasted or should not get damaged thank you very much uh, this was all from my side hope you all like my slides thank you Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's audible. Yes, actually, uh, there are different companies which are working on this concept. 
as uh, small multi rotor aircraft has been uh, designed which will be flying with the uh, move, by the movement of our hands only so which, this is very big achievement in the aero modeling so on the bigger aircrafts there are different companies which are which are working that they can make the fully automated aircraft which will fly out itself and land itself so the cost factor mainly depends upon the different type of configurations for example if we are taking the trainer category of aircraft which is around the 1 meter wingspan so it will cost around the 15 to 20000 along with the transmitter battery and everything which we will be included in that on including transmitters including battery including charger including the all the components installed on the aircraft and the aircraft as well the total cost will be cost around the 15000 to 20000 for trainer trainer aircraft only the process which we are following is uh, like first of all we manufacture the aircraft after manufacturing we install the all the uh, basic component like wing and tail plane so we calculate the cg without installing the empty uh, without installing the electronic components and the battery uh, like uh, uh, we get to, i have mentioned that the cg point is 1 by 3 of the cord so we mark mark uh, points on that particular point on the uh, wing cord and we get the cg calculated after and then again we calculate the cg by installing all the electronic components in order to check that the whether cg is coming on the right location or not there are uh, yes ma'am so in uh, specifically if i talk about the center of gravity location there are different kind of formulas which are available on the internet and the software also uh, softwares are also available by the help of which we we can calculate the cg for the different kinds of the aircraft like delta wing configuration or any other configurations Okay, this is uh, one of the final final question. Like, uh, if uh, uh, the viewers nearly the nearly thousand hundred people have wa watching this live, so if yes, anyone wants to project in RC aircraft with yes, their sir. own configuration, can you make it up? Yes, sir. If oh. they are having uh, proper their designs and the calculation they are having, then we can surely make it uh, design those aircrafts as well. Sir. okay okay so i request the viewers if they are having any uh, design ideas and all they can contact jija singh for that purpose okay so with this we will end the session for today and uh, i thank jija for spending this time valuable time for uh, uh, this wonderful lecture surely it will be ignited some minds especially those who are uh, in the field of aerospace as well as uh, those who are interested in aerospace science okay so i would like to thank uh, niti ayog uh, atl lab of uh, kv air force chandigarh and uh, i would like to thank uh, medha ma'am a uh, vice principal of that uh, particular school and uh, i would like to thank the principal as well as the atl coordinator atal uh, tinkering lab coordinator and uh, niti ayog for uh, accepting the invitation and uh, thank you jujar for the lecture thank you very much sir on thank the behalf of poker obitech i would like to thank you all for providing us such a great opportunity to explain a very basics about the rc aircraft design and thank you sir thank you thank you we can end this yes